back news next i'm jared my lovely wife kara is at work and today we are going we are talking about how to fix an edge that bevel is off so when one side of the edge is bigger than the other side no we're not going to use this ferrum forge gavco skinner with custom hand work done, hand work, hand milling, but I am going to show you on paper and I will show you what I'm talking about a little bit on the stone, but not really, mostly on paper. Now, first off, what I'm talking about is when you have an edge bevel. So if we take this Hinder XM24, so if one side is bigger on the edge, so when you sharpen your knife, and this edge bevel is bigger on one side than the other, okay? Now I did some drawings here. I'm mostly going to just be talking and showing a description because I feel like this is more important to show you like this than by putting a knife to the stone. So picture if this is like a 22 and a half degree edge. So that would be basically like this angle, okay? Give or take. Now, this is, say, 17 degrees, and this is a good, let's say that's perfect, okay, each side on this edge, and this is the knife. So, this is the knife, like this. This is the stone, this is the edge, that's the tip of the edge, okay? So, say this is like 17 degrees, so instead of being like 22 degrees, it's like 17 degrees, and let's say that's perfect. Now, what if one side is bigger than the other? If you look at this, you see how this, the part that's hitting the stone here is bigger than this side. So this is 17 degrees. This side right here is 22 degrees. How do you make that better? Now, you might think that, okay, I'm at 17 degrees on this side, and this side is 22 degrees so maybe i should just lift my edge up and continue sharpening well what will happen if you do that is this so right here so this was the 17 degrees and then so if this was the the edge then you lift it up that's what will happen right there so this was the 17 degrees from here to here, now you're going to make this little mark. So now you can continue that, and what's gonna happen? You're gonna make this side even smaller. So the side that was 22 degrees, now that edge bevel is going to be smaller, or edge angle, and then your edge is going to look like this. Imagine the black part is gone, that's what we removed. It'll end up looking like this. It could potentially. So a better way to fix it. Now we're back to the edge is 17 degrees on this side and 22 degrees on this side. Now what we should do is flip it over to the other side. Put work on this side and continue. So now this is the 17 degree side. This is the 22 degree side. And now we start sharpening it. And what'll happen is, is we'll slowly remove steel. You know, slowly remove it. And what's gonna happen is it's going to remove steel from this side of the edge. You see where it's going right now? Now this would be the tip. Right here now would be the tip. If we keep removing steel. And then you see how it's starting to straighten it out. It's removing steel from this side and taking, it's taking steel from both sides basically. Now if we keep going up, a little bit more and a little bit more, imagine these lines as me removing steel. Now, look at it. Now we're almost perfect, right? It's almost perfect. But what we're gonna have to do is after we remove the steel from the 22 degree side, go back to the 17 degree side and straighten it out just a little bit. You, you're gonna have to, to match it back up. But that way, you, you straighten it up by 
removing steel from the smaller side and then you can make both the sides 22 degrees or you can take and this would be the 17 degree side right here and then this would be the 22 degree side and try to put a 17 degree angle on this side now what you're going to do is you're going to hit a portion in the edge where the tip's not going to hit basically because you got to lay it back a little bit farther so instead of it being 22 degrees now you lay it back a little bit to the 17 degrees and try to match it up you can also do that and it's going to uh, end up putting a 17 degree angle on the, part, the side that had 22 degrees. So you're basically just matching the 17 degrees. But if you want to match the 22 degrees, you can just by sticking with the 22 degrees and keep sharpening until the edge on the other side or the bevel on the other side matches the side you're working on. But you're going to have to go back to the other side and match it back up so that the point, because the tip, the actual tip is going to be a little off and you want that tip to be right down the middle. So you want it to be like this, where it's a perfect triangle. So you're probably going to have to go back to the other side and do a little work to, to match it up perfectly. But that way you don't wind up just changing your angle on the 17 degree side to match the 22 degree side because it'll just create more problems. Go to the 22 degree side and do more work on that side and then it'll remove steel from the 17 degree side and then you can match it up from there. So hopefully that made sense because that's going to be an issue many, many times, especially freehanding, well, almost always freehanding, because there's going to be times where you feel like you're, you're at the right angle. You're going to feel like this is the drop Trizola made by Wii. You're going to feel like both your angles are perfect, even though they're not. Like, so you might be just a little bit like that much higher on one side or even less, and it'll create a bigger bevel on one side, and you're going to want to match it up. And there's going to be times where one side is bigger and you don't want it to be bigger. You want it to be smaller, and it's only because you laid back the edge a little too far. So what you're going to do is instead of just raising this right here and continue to work, just go back to the other side that you already have your 22 degree side on and then continue to keep that angle. Then after it met, you know, you, you've, this, this bevel has um, worked the steel off of the other side, then flip it back over and match it up. You're not going to want to go back to the angle you were at though, because then you'll just create the same problem. Now you're going to have to lift it up a little bit and now match it up. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's look at one more thing. Now there are going to be a lot of times when you are going to run in to grind differences. And sometimes this can be frustrating for a sharpener because you feel like you have the edge matched. Like, you know, you can't figure out why it's not the same. And you probably do have it matched. The problem is, is the grind. So sometimes one side is ground deeper than another side. So what winds up happening is, is one side of the edge will be thinner or have less steel behind the edge than the other side. And there's ways to kind of look for this. Now, this isn't always because um, sometimes it's right in the middle, right? But sometimes you can look at the choil area and you can see if they match up right here. And you can look and see if those match. Let's look at a bigger one. You can look at this bevel right here and see if this matches from one side to the other. Basically draw a straight line from here to the other side. 
and see if one's deeper than the other. That's one way. Another way is from a factory tip. You can sometimes see if one tip is bigger. Sometimes that's just the way they came off the belt too. So that's not always because of the grind, but sometimes you can look and see, does this match up to this side? And then is one one edge originally, was it thicker than the other one? Sometimes that's a big, t you know, telling sign is that if from the factory, their edges didn't match up. But sometimes it's just the way they sharpened it, you know. But a lot of times it's from their grinds. Now, sometimes you'll see where they don't match up at all. Like if you look at this one, see... Look, see, watch where this one ends right here. This this grind right here on the top swedge. See where it ends? Now look at the other side. Oh, that's far away. So you see, and just like even down here by the plunge grind, it's different. Right here, they did it great. On this side, they didn't. They, they the, the the plunge grind is farther up the blade, and then you can see how the edge kind of swirls right there. That's different thicknesses on this side. This side was done fairly well. It was done okay uh, compared to the other side, but you can still see it's a little thinner here than a little thicker. Now, sometimes that's typical for a taper where it's a little thinner here and then maybe it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. But where it winds up being an issue when you're sharpening is when this side's thinner and then it gets the thicker and then the other side is the opposite way or it doesn't do it at all. So then you have one edge that kind of looks like a wave and then the other side is perfectly straight. So you want to watch for that. And if it is the grind from the knife, now, in order to fix that problem, it's you're going to have to move a little bit. Either one, you can use the marker trick where people mark the edge with a marker, and you can check to, to match them both up because what's going to happen is they're going to be two different angles because one side will give you a thinner bevel than the other side with the same angle. So... Or you can just watch your grip pattern and watch your edge nice and closely and just try to match them up by doing small movements. So if one angle doesn't match, then you might have to just barely lift it or drop it. I recommend, you know, starting high and then dropping down. So start with a higher angle and try to match it and see you know and then slowly start dropping it down on one side to match the other side you know um it's not that big of a deal you don't have to stress about it you don't have to go crazy this was the quest custom gent very great knife i love this knife even though the grinds are off i still love this knife you know it doesn't uh would i appreciate it a little bit more if it didn't have those issues maybe but, uh, but I still love it. So don't hate the knife because of it. Sometimes, you know, from some factory, this is a custom. So, you know, it's a little bit more forgiving when you know it was done by hand. But sometimes when you get a factory knife, if it's really bad, you can just send it back and they'll replace it. So, you know, if you can catch it from the start and you notice it, maybe you might want to send it back and get a new knife if that's possible. And if not... You know, it's not that big of a deal. You can still get a sharp knife. You can still make it sharp. The edge will still work and still cut and still be just fine. It's just not going to be a perfect straight matching bevel on both sides. So there you guys go. A little bit of a conversation about sharpening. I love you guys. Peace.